In previous video, I discussed about data types and entities, that is abstract data types. You know that entities only describe how variables of given data types are operated. It provides us a list of operations, but it doesn't explain how data operations happen. Conversely, data structure describes how data is to be organized and accessed in the computer memory. They provide ways for implementing entities in data handling modules. There are different ways to implement entities because there are different data structures. Selecting an entity implementation that uses best data structure according to your need is essential for creating efficient computer programs. Hello and welcome to Myra. In this video, I will be discussing data structure. So let's get started. As you can see on the screen, this is how data structure is classified. We have discussed primitive data structure in previous video. We have also discussed stack and queue. Now we will discuss non-primitive data types, linear data structure, non-linear data structure and their subcategories that is array, linked list, tree and graphs and we will also discuss as tables. We know that primitive data types are predefined data types inside the given programming languages. Non-primitive data types or object-oriented data types are user-defined data types that store different data types in single entities. As an example, consider list A. Here A contains integer 1, string apple, float 2.21, and boolean false inside it. Hence A is a non-primitive data type. Now non-primitive data types are further divided into linear and non-linear data types. So let us look at them one by one. Linear data type follows arrangement of element in a sequential manner. Each element in linear data type is linked to its previous and next element. Since the elements are arranged linearly, it becomes easy to access the element in a single run. The time complexity of structure increases with increase in size of data structure. Linear data types consist of arrays, linked list, stacks, and queues. Arrays are static in size. That is, once the size is fixed, it cannot be increased further in the program. Linked list, stacks, and queues are dynamic in size. That is, size can be increased by adding new element in the program. Let's discuss this data structure one by one. Arrays. Arrays are static in size. Arrays are collection of similar types of data. There can be an array of integers, floats, or string. Arrays consist of allotting sequence of space in computer memory and then filling elements in that empty space. The sequence is ended with a special null token. The element in the array can be accessed using index. One can implement stacks, lists, and queues using arrays. Removing an element from the middle of the array might cause problem. Since then, you will have to shift each subsequent element one step back. Linked lists. Linked lists are dynamic in size. The need for linked list arises because of the fixed size of arrays. If you create an array having a maximum number of 5 cells, then you are only allowed to add 5 elements in the array. You cannot add more than that. If you create an array having 50 cells because you are only able to fill only 20 of them, then the memory corresponding to those 30 cells get wasted. To overcome these difficulties, linked lists were introduced. In linked list, elements are stored in chain of cells that don't need to be at a sequential memory address. Memory of each cell is allotted as needed. The address to the next cell is indicated using a pointer. The cell with empty pointer marks the end of the chain. The only disadvantage is that it's very hard to retrieve an item in linked list as you have to start searching from the first cell. Use it to get the address of the second cell. Then use second cell to get the address of third cell, and so on, until we finally get the nth cell. Also, it is difficult to backtrace the cell if we have the address of just one cell. Though backtracing is possible in doubly linked list, it consumes extra memory to store back the pointer. The doubly linked list is the linked list with an extra cell having two pointers, one to the cell before and another to the cell after it. Along with a doubly linked list, there is circular linked list and doubly circular linked list. In circular linked list, pointer on last scale gives address of first cell, whereas in doubly circular linked list, 
Pointer on first cell gives address of last cell and pointer on last cell gives address of first cell. Now non-linear data type. In this data type elements are not arranged in a sequential manner but rather the elements are connected to more than two elements which causes difficulty in accessing the data. More time is required to access the data. Trees and graphs come under non-linear data structure. Let's go through this data structure one by one. Trees Similar to linked list, trees also employ memory cells that do not need to be contiguous in physical memory to store objects. Trees also has pointer which gives the address of next cell. The only difference that in the linked list, cells are arranged sequentially but trees has a structure similar to an actual physical tree. Cells in trees are called nodes. Pointers are called edges. Topmost node is called root or parent node. Siblings are two nodes that have the same parent. Nodes with no children are called leaf node. A path is the gap between two nodes and edges that can lead from one node to another. Level of the node represents the generation of the node. A set of trees is called a forest. A special type of tree is the binary search tree. Let X represent the parent node and Y Z represent the children node. If Y is less than X and Z is greater than X, then Y will be on the left and Z will be on the right of parent node. If we have to search for the node with a given key value, then this property of the tree makes the job easy. The complexity of searching an item is proportional to the height of the binary tree. This complexity is removed by doing tree balancing. As an example, if we go on inserting node with value greater than the previous node then, we will end up getting a structure similar to a linked tree. This can be rearranged in order to reduce the height. This is called tree balancing. Some self-balancing trees are red-black tree, AVL tree and B tree. These data structures are mainly used in maps and sets. Graphs Graphs are similar to trees except they don't have parent or children nodes. Data can be arranged freely as nodes, which are known as vertices and edges. And any node can have multiple incoming and outgoing edges. This makes graphs more flexible. Let's elaborate more on structure of a graph. Two nodes connected by a ray are called directed edges, where the arrow shows the address of the next node. Two nodes connected by segments are called undirected edges. Graphs using directed edges are called directed graphs. Graphs using undirected edges are called undirected graphs. As an example, graphs are used in hybrid networks, slide network, internet, local area network, etc. The hash tables. Hash tables are often used as a linear data structure, but they can also be used as a non-linear data structure. Hash tables are similar to arrays, but unlike arrays, elements are not stored in an order sequence. The position an element occupies is given by a hash function. That special function takes data you want to store as input and outputs a random looking number. This number is interpreted as a memory location. This allows us to access the data instantly. As a disadvantage, sometimes the hash function returns the same memory position for two different inputs. This is called hash collision. Ideal hash function written random looking values for different inputs. Hash tables are often used to implement sets and maps. Thank you for watching the video. Hope this video was informative. Please like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned.